Hi everybody, thanks for tuning in to your pal Hobson Scotch. Today we are touching on just heat, heat uh, lighting for Mediterranean species. We'll touch on other topics of other species if, if you like. Please comment if you have a different species that I didn't touch on. I would love to, to speak about those. It's overwhelming at first to provide heat for these tortoises, but it's, uh, it's not that crazy. So the easiest way to touch about it is we'll start off with the fixture. I don't run a thermostat. I don't deem them necessary. I, it's one more piece of electrical hardware that I don't think is needed for tortoises if you are providing the right lights. So right off the get-go, you can go and get a 150 watt lamp fixture. These aren't that crazy expensive. I've gotten them used for $20. I've gotten them brand new for $50. It, it truly doesn't matter or what brand, just as long as that it has a shield so that it propels that heat and light downwards. This is an Exoterra one. I have below, we have Arcadia and all living things. It's all the same stuff, truly. At the end of the day, it's just a plug-in and a fixture with a reflector, just like your living room lamp, but upside down. So in the idea of simplification is I've hung this and I've just used chicken wire wrapped around here in order to not put such stress on this a little bit or else you get that nasty iPhone charger fraying. Uh, and you don't want the idea of a fire starting or a frayed cord or any of those things when it comes to your reptiles. These are exotic pets. If it was easy, uh, anyone would do it, but here we are with our exotics. So moving from the fixture, because we've got the fixture and hung, you never want the fixture more than uh, the bulb closer than a foot to the tortoise. This here is, I've lowered this to get a little bit of a higher temperature out of it. And we just use this laser temperature gun to raise or lower the spots. The soil is wet, so the reading is a little bit inaccurate, but you quickly get to 29 Celsius in the spot of it. You want a flood style bulb. So now we'll move over to bulbs. Where were we here? So this here is a 120 watt replacement. It only uses 90 watts and because of that, you're gonna have to have a lower, it hanging a little bit lower. I like using a 120 or even 150 watt bulb and that gets you to have this higher up and have a broader area of heat provided. You can go to your home hardware, your Rona, your Totem, your Walmart, all these places and find halogen flood style bulbs. You want halogen. Uh, halogen is getting phased out slowly by Canada, so it's not always easy to find, but it's totally worth it. The reason they're getting phased out in Canada and lots in the UK is they're not efficient. They want us with efficiencies and with our utilities and our usage of power, they want us to use LEDs and other like likewise ones and get away from the halogen because halogen, uh, it expresses heat. It doesn't always put out an efficient light source. So for reptiles perspective, they work amazing. From your utility bills perspective, uh, not so much. Um, I like going and getting deals. I always, I don't go to a pet store. I don't think a pet store is the answer for tortoises very often. With these G&Es, they work great. They are the, uh, the, the BR38 or the PR38. They, here's kind of showing the actual, the style of them themselves. I like having a nice broad glass dome. I find that that is part of the recipe for creating a nice broad area of heat. You want a broad area of heat in order to create those microclimates for these torsos, just like you and I, for us to regulate, regulate our temperature. If every space was the exact same temperature, we would sometimes be stuck sweating, sometimes be stuck freezing, sometimes we'd never get that actual medium comfort. It was that? Uh, the, the perfect date, March 6th, not too hot, not too cold, just sweater weather. But, so this is where I find a lot of people are going to start with a lamp like this. They're going to go to the pet store. They're going to tell them this is the best. Take this home. It's a natural light. It's a multi-purpose -pur basking spot. It enhances the animal's coloration, stimulates plant growth. 
These are all lies. Uh, these don't last very long. They're so expensive. They're about four times the price of one of these. Um, and they are a spot bulb. I don't know what multi-purpose they're referring to, but they truly just heat one little spot. They're 150 watts. They're going to use a ton of power and they don't last very long. One little bump or a misting, these bulbs blow up and they're garbage in my opinion. Uh, I have this one still from when I first started out in the tortoise game and this one is actually the dreaded red bulb in this box. This is this is for apocalyptal freeze over emergency is about the only thing I would use a red bulb now for for my tortoise. It, this came with my first tortoise and it is total and without a doubt garbage. So we'll take get rid of this paperweight because we're over topic talking about that garbage topic. But as far as heat goes, I, I like Noma, I like GNE, I like Globe. Um, I, I'll take anything really and use that as a heat bulb. It, it truly doesn't matter too much. You want it to emit a white light. And that's because a white light will stimulate their pineal gland. Pineal glands are in all Mediterranean species. The Greek spurthi, the uh, marginated, the Hermans tortoise, the horse field or Russian tortoise. These are also good for sulcatas, leopards, um, even redfoots for their day heat. Um, Indian stars, pancake tortoises. These are for all tortoises for their daytime. They have a pineal gland. It needs to be stimulated with white light. That creates energy and functionability for our shelled friends. Now, if your house gets super frozen, I don't know whose house would get so cold. I live in Canada in a Canadian frozen over desert from minus 40 to plus 40. We, my house does not get below 15 to 12 Celsius, but if you have a sick tortoise or a red foot that needs that night heat, a ceramic heat emitter without light is a great option to raise those ambient temperatures. If you are finding that you're, you're not getting proper temperatures, this, these things here are great additions. They last long, they're durable, but they do not emit that light. They, they don't emit light whatsoever. Uh, so they are good for red foots. I find they're great for that nighttime addition. If you, if your house gets frozen, I don't know whose house would ever get so cold for your Mediterranean species. It's not necessary, but it's something to touch on for topics of heat. Other heating options are your tubular heat emitters, uh, which are handy in sheds, or, uh, you could get a, a different style ceramic heat emitter that would be more of a force furnace style and that would be beneficial in a shed as well but for indoor usages the the room temperature is good enough for these tortoises overnight and the halogens are great for the day for that activity for that heat for them to digest their food for that heat to get their cold-blooded systems up and firing and running for them to want to go and eat their food digest their food and stimulate activity in general um a good broad heated area allows them to chase the microclimates that they need and and live to be tortoises as they should be if you can't afford quality lights i'm a bit big advocate for saying that this pet may not be for you it i i don't see the reason why anyone would get an exotic pet and then complain about the prices of lights but I see it a lot. It's uh, I the expression for me is I always wanted a Clydesdale horse. I think they're so beautiful running through a field, except for I live in town and my backyard just doesn't permit for a Clydesdale horse, regardless how much I love them. So I get that everyone loves loves their pet, but if you can't afford quality heat lamps, please don't get a tortoise. It's uh, it's part of exact exotic pet keeping. It, it's something that I'm, I'm very passionate about. Now, if you have any questions regarding the idea of heat for Mediterranean species after today, I will gladly touch more on the topic. Just please comment. Don't forget to subscribe, like my videos, and, and share with your friends. If you, if you have tortoise friends that you meet along the way, tag them in this or invite them to my Facebook group, Natural Tortoise Keepers Canada. 
Thanks so much for tuning in. Hops and Scotch signing off.